Hello there, my fellow Armored Corps veterans, and welcome back to another episode in our rich and diverse Imperial Guard Vehicles series. For today, I wanted to take a short break from all the artillery and the super heavies we covered in the past. Instead, we're gonna take a look at a few vehicles which are far more obscure and less glorified. Ladies and gentlemen, these are some utility vehicles. And today is gonna be all about these unsung little guys. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Cyclops The Cyclops remote demolition vehicle was originally thought to have originated on the forge world of Lucius sometime during the 38th millennium but it appears its origins lie further back to the bygone era of the Great Crusade in the 30th millennium. A remotely controlled demolition vehicle, the Cyclops was deployed by the elite Solar Auxilia of the Imperial Army. Their role was to breach heavy, key enemy-held positions in a situation where a direct assault was judged too costly, and engagement from afar was made impossible by dense terrain. The Cyclops was transported to the front line in a Drakosan armored carrier or an Auxilia Arvus lighter, and unloaded under cover a safe distance from the intended target. It was then controlled by an operator equipped with a Vox control unit and initiated into the outer tiers of the machine arcana, granting them sufficient knowledge to guide the Cyclops to its target and detonate its internal charge when it was close enough to inflict the requisite damage. The unit could be configured into a variety of munition types for use against multiple kinds of target. One of these, the so-called automatic imploder, was so powerful it was sometimes employed against apex Xenos forms and similar foes when all other means had failed. In the 41st millennium, the Cyclops has been used regularly throughout the Imperium by the Imperial Guard for any demolition task deemed too risky for human soldiers to accomplish. The Imperial Guard regiments that use the Cyclops have great affection for it, as it does keep them out of harm's way. It is primarily used to attack enemy bunkers, strong points, and obstructions like razor wire and tank traps. Imperial Guardsmen have found them useful also for other charges like clearing minefields, destroying bridges, attacking fortified enemy structures during urban combat, and even attacking enemy tanks. Cyclops are transported to the battlefield by chimeras, but can also be carried in greater number by Gorgons, Crassus, and Valkyrie transports. A Cyclops can also be airdropped behind enemy lines to attack fuel depots, ammunition stores, and command structures. There are 12 known patterns, its power plant is an HB40-491 multi-fuel. It weighs 1.5 tons. Its length is 2.5 meters. Its width is 1.8 meters. Its height is 1.2 meters. Its maximum speed on road is 42 kilometers an hour. Its maximum speed off-road is 24 kilometers an hour. Its superstructure armor is 30 millimeters. And its hull armor is another 30 millimeters. The Centaur The Centaur is a small armored utility vehicle that is used in a variety of roles on the battlefield. It is a common sight both within the armies of the Imperial Guard and those PDF units with sufficient technological knowledge to build them. The Centaur can serve as an Imperial Guard command squad transport, a communications vehicle, and a supply vehicle but it is most commonly used as an artillery tow vehicle during prolonged sieges or fixed enemy emplacements. The vehicle has a normal crew complement of only two, a driver and a gunner, but it can be crewed by just one in special circumstances. A Centaur can carry up to five passengers in its open-topped crew compartment. Its notoriously robust and powerful engine can run on even low-grade Promethium or any other type of fossil fuel. While the Centaur can be used for a large number of logistical purposes on the battlefield, it is most commonly deployed as an artillery tow vehicle. 
Its powerful V6 engine allows it to easily pull smaller artillery pieces like the heavy mortar cannon and the quad cannon even over the broken landscape of an Imperial battlefield. When not towing artillery pieces, the Centaur is counted among the fastest vehicles of the Imperial Guard. It can also be assigned to serve as a transport to a squad of Imperial Guard Grenadiers. In this configuration, the vehicle is usually modified by the addition of extra armor plating to protect its crew and passengers from enemy fire. It is generally well appreciated by the crew, not the least because the passengers in a Centaur can attach the heavy or special weapons they possess to a mount on the vehicle's front, adding their own firepower to that of the vehicle. There are 14 known patterns, its power plant is a Vulcanor 8 twin-coupled multi-fuel. It weighs 6.2 tons. Its length is 4.1 meters. Its width is 3 meters. Its height is 2.3 meters. Its maximum speed on road is 110 kilometers an hour. Its maximum speed off-road is 70 kilometers an hour. Its superstructure armor is 80 millimeters and its hull armor is 50 millimeters. The Trojan The Trojan logistical support tank is one of the main workhorse vehicles of the Imperial Guard. Its main use is to transport supplies from the safety of the supply dump to the front line. This vehicle is built around the same chassis and engine as the Chimera APC, but it trades its troop capacity for a supply hold and possesses an external crane to hoist the supplies out. The Trojan can also be used to transport even larger amounts of supplies than can fit in the hold on trailers that it tows behind it. It is a bit larger than the Centaur utility tank. The Trojan is only lightly armed, and that means it is not meant to be used as a frontline combatant. It is easy to manufacture and it is very efficient in its given role, but it is unable to tow vehicles due to its rather weak crane system. As such, that task is better left to the Atlas recovery tank, which we will talk about in a couple of minutes. The Trojan's main purpose is the transportation of supplies and other material to the front line. This can include ammunition, foodstuffs, clothing, water, weapons, and just about anything else that is required as long as it fits inside the vehicle's hold. The Trojan has several types of trailers it tows behind it, including a munitions trailer, a fuel tanker, and a general supplies trailer. It can also tow weapon platforms such as the Earthshaker cannon, Medusa Siege Gun, Quad Launcher, and Heavy Mortar Cannon, which may be too large or the terrain too rough for a smaller Centaur to tow instead. The Trojan can also carry the large shells that artillery pieces require, so they may never stop firing for want of ammunition. Finally, they can be used as a command vehicle or communications vehicle if the need arises and as minesweepers and bridge layers if there are no other alternatives. The Trojan can be outfitted with a pintle mounted heavy stubber or storm bolter, a hunter killer missile launcher to give it some more firepower, camouflage netting, extra armor plating, rough terrain modifications and the track guards to give it more protection, and a dozer blade, a searchlight, smoke launchers, and improved communications gear to make it generally more useful. Notable users of this thing include the 9th Dnieper Tank Corps, the 17th Talarn Heavy Tank Company, the 9th Krieg Heavy Tank Company, the 12th Valhallen Field Artillery, the 8th Valhallen Armored Regiment, the 9th Koenig Heavy Tank Company. Its crew consists of one commander, one driver, and one crane operator. Its power plant is a Vulcanor 16 twin-coupled multi-fuel. It weighs 3.5 tons. Its length is 6.9 meters. Its width is 5.7 meters. Its height is 3 meters. Its maximum speed on road is 80 kilometers an hour. Its maximum speed off-road is 60 kilometers an hour. 
Its superstructure armor is 90 mm and its hull one is another 90 mm. Finally, for today, the Atlas. The Atlas is an armored recovery vehicle based on a tank chassis that is used by the forces of the Imperial Guard and possibly other Imperial forces such as the PDF and the armed forces of the Inquisition. Its main role is to recover damaged or immobilized armored vehicles during and after battle. The Atlas uses a powerful rear-mounted crane to tow vehicles out of the line of fire and to the field repair shop, where they can be fixed and sent back into battle. Heavily damaged vehicles can be placed on trailers and hauled away by a Trojan to be repaired at a better equipped facility. The larger spade at the rear of the Atlas is used to keep the tank from being dragged backwards by the weight of the target. If a vehicle is completely destroyed and beyond repair, it is stripped of any usable equipment and unfired ammunition, its machine spirit commanded to the Emperor, and then the chassis is left to rust in peace. The Atlas is mainly used to recover damaged or immobilized tanks from the front line, where they can be repaired, but it can also be used to simply move a vehicle out of the way of another vehicle, and to move other obstructions. An Atlas is capable of lifting and towing up to one full Lehman Rust battle tank of any variant, but anything larger, such as an Imperial Bane Blade, will need to be towed by up to four Atlases to move it even a short distance. A regiment lucky enough to be given multiple Atlas recovery vehicles usually groups all of them into a single recovery squadron that is under the direct command of the regimental colonel and his staff. The tanks are given out as needed to the various companies. The Atlas uses the same Mars Alpha pattern chassis as the Lehman Russ main battle tank, but with the turret ring and armor plating removed and the engine overcharged to provide more power. It is always kept in reserve during battle until it is needed, and when it enters the battlefield to tow a stricken tank, it is always protected by friendly units until it is clear of the fight. Thus, the Atlas is only equipped with a hull-mounted heavy bolter for general protection. It can be upgraded with camouflage netting, extra armor plating, a hunter-killer missile launcher, smoke launchers, an improved communication system, a minesweeper, another pintle-mounted heavy stubber or storm bolter, rough terrain modifications, a searchlight, and track guards. There are nine known patterns. Its crew consists of one commander, one driver, and one operator. Its power plant is an MR-230 V12 multi-fuel. It weighs 43 tons. Its length is 7.08 meters. Its width is 4.68 meters. Its height is 3.75 meters. Its maximum speed on road is 34 kilometers an hour. Its maximum speed off road is 20 kilometers an hour. Its superstructure armor is 90 millimeters. And its hull armor is 80 millimeters. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these utility vehicles of the Imperial Guard for today. Are you a fan of these unsung heroes of the battlefield? Which one of the four discussed today did you find most interesting? Let us know and discuss any and all opinions about them in the comments below. Was the video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great day. The Emperor Protects.